Since its inception in 2006, Challenge Wanaka has built itself a reputation as a true bucket list event in the world of long distance triathlon. Beautiful, challenging and welcoming, the event has twice been voted the most scenic triathlon in the world. Now, 12 years on, a new chapter opens for Challenge Wanaka. The pre-dawn start and the ultimate challenge of a full distance race remains, but in 2018, the professional race moves to a new half distance format. For those that have had success here in the past, the change presents a new and perhaps unwelcome challenge. At the same time, the half distance race opens the door to top athletes who have not been able to consider a full distance race at this time of year. Among them, Javier Gomez, the current half distance world champion. The net result is undoubtedly the strongest pro field ever assembled for Challenge Wanaka and one of the most unpredictable races for many years. I'll be very interested in how the race actually unfolds. You've got the likes of Dylan McNeese, Tony Dodds, Javier who can swim pretty much front pack in any race in the world. Then you've got the likes of myself and Joe Skipper, Luke McKenzie who tend to be powerhouses on the bike and you've got dangerous runners out there, the likes of Braden Curry and Javier. They could just about stand on any start line and win any race based on their run pedigrees. It's true that this race is special, this race has something uh, unique. I love the roads, you know, swimming was good, the lake is amazing, yeah, really good running trails, so it's going to be the first one of the year, so I'm not that fit or not as fit as I would like to, but um, yeah, it's a great place to start and uh, it's going to be a pretty world-class uh, competition, you know, it's not going to be easy at all. <laughs> This is the sort of race that you've never heard anyone say uh, anything bad about, anything negative. They say it's spectacular and, I mean, looking back here, it certainly is spectacular. It's a very honest course and I think that's also what's appealing about it to me. It's not one of those races that you're going to get off lightly and it's really going to challenge all the athletes. And to have uh, such a stellar field lining up here, it's because it's such a, an iconic race now. It really is. It's the community, it's the course, it's uh, it's a many things, but I think, you know, it's a full credit to Challenge for assembling such a great field. Yeah, everyone, I guess, has a clean slate at the start of each season and we'll get to see what, what everyone's got. Well, after blustery conditions and the build-up to race day, the lake is calm and clear for the deep water start in Lake Wanaka. The pro men's feel the first to head off on this 1.9 kilometre open water swim. 16 professional men in this field, one of the deepest pro fields ever seen for a half distance race in New Zealand. While there are athletes in the field who would undoubtedly be happy to see rough water and slow swim times, conditions like these are perfect for the faster swimmers. The smooth water presenting them with a perfect opportunity to take control of this race right from the off. A lot of it comes into the start, how well you do at the start, if you manage to get in the pack or if you don't manage to get in the pack. Like I think you're probably going to see Dylan, uh, Javier and Tony Dodds at the front. And I think people like Braden Curry, uh, Luke McKenzie, I'll be hoping that they don't make that front little split of three and I can stay in a group with them, but the speed will be on from the start, you know. And it is a very fast start to the swim. Approaching the first turn, there's a strong group opening up a gap. As expected, Tony Dodds, Dylan McNeese and Javier Gomez are setting the pace in the water. But local favourite Braden Curry's holding on at the back of the group. Gomez knows that with this field, a win here is not going to be easy. I expect a hard race. Fast, well this course is going to be difficult because of the conditions, because of the hills and the run mainly off-road and I think almost 300 metres ascent on that run course that it's impossible to run fast, but uh, you need to be really strong, really tough. You cannot have weaknesses. I would rather like more of a faster swim, or more like a kind of, uh, swimming pool athlete. But um, yeah, it could be anything here. In the women's pro race, New Zealand athlete Rebecca Clark is setting the pace. Right on her feet is one of the race favourites, Australian Annabelle Luxford. The pair are pulling away quickly, leaving the chasers strung out behind. As the swim finish line approaches, a steady rain has set in and the lead group of six are still together with a lead of over two and a half minutes on the first chasing group. 
The pace has been fast. Dodds crosses the line first in a new record time, 23 minutes, 12 seconds. Right behind him, two-time Challenge Wanaka champion Dylan McNeese and world champion Javier Gomez. Alex Polizzi's in fourth, Graham O'Grady is fifth, and rounding out that lead group, Braden Curry. The 31-year-old Wanaka local is the course record holder here for the half distance and will be a force to be reckoned with today. I think for me personally, I've become a really all-rounded athlete, which you know I'm really proud of. Kona, um, Ironman World Champs, I was out of the water in the front five and uh, on the bike ride I feel like I can really hold my own now. You know, my performance has definitely been more towards the uh, half distance racing and uh, speed is normally something that comes to me easier than probably endurance does. So it's always pretty exciting and it, it just sort of looks like a bit of a sprint distance in a way. The lead group heads out of transition one with two minutes 45 seconds to the closest chasers. But when the chase group includes the likes of Luke Bow, Luke McKenzie, Joe Skipper and defending champion Dougal Allen, two and a half minutes of advantage can disappear quickly. And for the Northern Hemisphere athletes, the difficult conditions could be to their advantage. The tougher the conditions, the better. I'm hoping that it's windy, rainy. I mean, if it wants to snow, that'd be great. I'd love it, and uh, it's coming from Oregon, I'd, I'd, I'd feel more at home. You don't know what you can get. You can get fast conditions here, or you can get nightmare conditions where it's just every man for himself. If my ideal situation would be if I got out of the water and I was with Jesse Thomas and Dougal Allen, and we all just, you know, we all had good legs and we just smashed it, <laughs> basically. Because we're not going to be with Gomez, like, you've got to be realistic and know your race plan. So we need to work together, catch him, and then ideally put time into him before the run if we want a chance to win the race. That would be my plan. Work with him and then try and ditch him. <laughs> the two leading ladies exit the water in 25 minutes and 49 seconds. Race favourite Annabelle Luxford just a couple of steps in front of Rebecca Clark. The leading pair have a 2 minute 39 second advantage over Kiwi Amelia Watkinson in just over five minutes on fellow race favourite Laura Siddle of Great Britain. This is a testing and beautiful 90 kilometre stage, taking in the shores of both Lake Wanaka and Lake Hawea before heading back to town for the run transition. Just one lap of this incredible course for the pro athletes in 2018, heading back to town past Glendu Bay, the lead group is down to four. The triple threat, Gomez, McNeese and Curry, rounded out by Tony Dodds and the pace is on with the lead group aware they will have to work very hard indeed to hold on to this advantage. This bike course is definitely a very challenging bike course. Um, that first 40k has got lots of sort of pinchy little climbs. Um, there's a lot of time to be made um, throughout that ride. Dougal, um, Joe Skipper, um, Jesse Thomas, those guys are going to be coming um, and they're going to be pushing as hard as they can because they'll want to get all the gains they can out of that bike ride um, before we get into the run. Annabelle Luxford settles into a relaxed rhythm early on in the stage and is the lone leader having opened up a bit of a gap on Rebecca Clark with her early pace. Behind her, however, she knows Laura Siddle's bike strength and experience here in Wanaka will be eating into that advantage. Siddle has raced this course five times and is in no doubt as to how competitive this race can be. <laughs> what makes me suffer on this race? Not having won. <laughs> Always, for the last three years, come second. <laughs> I'd love to cross that line here in Wanaka um, and to win. It means a lot to me, so that's probably going to be a one of the hardest things to, uh, to, to battle with. And whilst I might not be as favoured over the shorter distance, I'm hoping that, you know, having been here the past three years and knowing this course so well, that that kind of is a, a pretty good bonus that I've got. For many of the 1500 athletes here, completing the world's most scenic triathlon is a goal that they've been working towards for months, if not years. Simply making it to the finish line is the achievement, even if your brother is one of the best triathletes in the world. Anna's definitely a very driven um, girl. She's, uh, you know, she's an amazing sister and, and super supportive. And yeah, for her, it was uh, just a chance for her to really um, give something 100% and um, see if she could achieve, you know, a really big goal in her own life. 
done the half and I'm very much about setting um, goals that really make me uncomfortable. I have two kids that um, have a lot to do with races and I want them to understand that racing it is about winning for some people but it's actually just sometimes about competing against yourself and those goals you set and I want them growing up never being, um, never letting fear take over them so I want them to see their mother's fear and they're very much seeing the ups and downs of the last 12 months training and whether it's 13 hours, whether it's the 17 hours that you're allowed, I, I'm not concerned, I just want to cross that finishing line. In the men's race, a significant chase group is formed and is reeling in time on the lead trio of Gomez, McNeese and Curry. To be in with a chance of winning this race, they know exactly what they need to be doing. Yeah, I think the bike course is what's really going to set yourself up for a great race here. It's, it's a tough course and, and with the wind, um, we could really see the times blow out. Um, so you, you're going to want to make sure that uh, you're in contention off the bike. and. The fact that it's such a strength orientated course, uh, it'll take a, wash a little bit of the speed off it. So I think that one might come into my favour a little bit. I feel I feel quite strong uh, at this point of the season. I don't necessarily feel quite as fast yet, um, which is a bit daunting to have guys like Javier coming up because they're going to bring an element of speed. I'm just not going to hold back, and I'm I'm just going to have to hope my legs show up because uh, I'm. I'm the way I see it, no one sits around and waits for me in the swim, so why am I going to um, sit around and wait for anyone else on the bike? And I've been thrashed so many times in the, in the water that it's, it's my turn to thrash someone back when I get on the bike. And that's honestly the approach I take is, you know, well done when you swim, but here we go, I'm coming for you. And uh, it's okay if it's really hurting me, because if it's hurting me, then it's obviously really, really hurting some of those athletes behind me. So um, it's just a take no prisoners approach on the bike and it seems to work. As the chasing men cross the Clutha River, the lead group is in sight. The two minute gap has been pulled back to 10 seconds and with 20 kilometres to go in the bike stage, the weather has deteriorated, but the race is wide open once again. In just 20 kilometres, the lead group has surrendered a two minute advantage and must pick up the pace again or start losing more time. Joe Skipper, having identified the need to get into transition ahead of Gomez and Curry, continues to drive the pace heading into Wanaka. Against a world champion like Gomez, starting the final run with any advantage will be crucial. As the end of the bike stage approaches, it is still anybody's race. Dougal Allen and Joe Skipper arrive in transition two first. They've given it everything on the last few kilometres, but it's only earned them a slender advantage. Curry, Jesse Thomas, Luke McKenzie and Gomez arrive just seconds behind them. With the race so close, the advantage has swung back towards the running specialists. Yeah, I mean, obviously this race is going to come down to transition two, really. Javier Gomez, who obviously is world champion and, and can run 110, 109 halves, you know, that's just this out of this world, you know, but again, this is a completely different kind of trail and terrain to what he uh, he has won big races on before. For us, obviously, it's in our backyard. Um, it's definitely the roads we train on every day. The run course is 50 metres from uh, my doorstep, so if there's any race for us to uh, have a good appearance on a world stage, then this is the course. Yeah, if it comes down to a, a running race for me, then I'll be really happy. For Annabelle Luxford, her time at the front of the women's race has run out. With 15 kilometres to go, Laura Siddle moves up to join Luxford. Siddle was five minutes down after the swim, but her strength on the bike is what she's known for, and she has put in a huge shift to bring herself level. Approaching Wanaka Airport on the way back to Transition 2, Siddle passes Luxford, and the pressure shifts to the race favourite. The question is, has she got enough in the tank to hold on to Siddle for the final 10 kilometres? Siddle and Luxford enter Transition 2 virtually together. Luxford just a few metres behind Siddle. In third place, it's Amelia Watkinson. She's two minutes down but still capable of moving up on the leaders if they're not in great shape. 
Siddle versus Luxford for the victory. Siddle has been here so many times before. The run has always been probably the uh, the struggle point. Um, the last two years I've come off the bike and had a bit of a cushion and had Yvonne chasing me down and you, you do tend to go through ups and downs um, on the run more so I think than the bike and the swim just with it being at the end of that long day. You focus on yourself and going as fast as you can forward and anyone behind you can do what they want to do but if you're going as best you can in the right direction then there's not much more you can do. Largely off-road and with a decent hill in the middle, the run course is a big part of what makes Wanaka unique in the triathlon world. The gravel and uneven surface is not affecting the pace of the race however, Curry and Gomez are flying around the edge of Lake Wanaka. Passing Dougal Allen and into second, Gomez is running 3 minute 22 per kilometre. Incredible pace. You know, the run course is one of those courses that if you feel good, you, you really love it, you enjoy it because you can put a lot of time into the others. But if you have a bad day, it can kill you completely, you know, because uh, it's, it's very hard, it's very tough. It's hard to predict the run time, but the fact that it's my first race of the year, the fact that it's such a tough course on gravel, I guess if you go about 115, 116 on this course would be pretty good. Uh, it's the first race of the year, so you don't really know what your fitness is at the moment, so I expect I can run well, but probably not as well as I will run in a few months. Both Curry and Gomez have been running at race record pace throughout the first half of the stage, but it's Gomez with a slight edge. He's been gaining a second or two on Curry every kilometre and catches the local athlete on the notorious Gun Road Hill. Curry has given it everything to stay ahead of Gomez and the effort shows on his face as Gomez passes and takes the lead. Curry just cannot respond on the climb. For all that, Curry is not ready to quit and is still there, hanging in as Gomez leads the way back to town. Two minutes further back, Jesse Thomas is challenging Dougal Allen for third. The 38-year-old American is a classy competitor and making his debut here in Wanaka with a potential podium finish. This in a year where his focus has shifted from the competition to the experience. I started the sport really late and I, so I was 30 when I started racing professionally. You know, I was a pretty decent distance runner and thought I'd be an Olympian, didn't make it. And now this was like kind of this rebirth of athleticism for me in my 30s that um, has just been a real uh, blessing. I'm nearing, I think, the tail end of my career. This year for me is all about cool races and cool places. And uh, Wanaka's been uh, one of those bucket list races that I've heard about since I started my career. I want to um, push myself as hard as I can. You know, I think there's an opportunity to do something cool too, so just see how it goes. For all his grit and determination, Braden Curry just cannot regain the seconds lost to Gomez on Gun Road. As the finish line approaches, Gomez is in complete control and giving no indication that the course or the incredible pace has been a problem. He predicted that 1.16 would be fast, but as he crosses the finish line, Gomez completes the run in 1 hour 12 minutes. His overall time, 3 hours 57 and 27 seconds, smashing Braden Curry's record from 2012. Curry receives a hero's welcome from the local crowd as he finishes just 17 seconds behind Gomez. A wonderful effort against the current world champion. Jesse Thomas's run does not let him down and he crosses the line two minutes later to earn himself third place. Past winners over the full distance course, Dylan McNeese and Dougal Allen finish fourth and fifth respectively. We had a bit of everything, rain, cold, hot, sun, you know, amazing course, uh, really tough course. I really enjoyed it but I had to give my 100% to, to win today. I think it's the first time I've ever raced Javier and uh, you know to get to race a guy of his calibre is um, yeah you got to be stoked to be there with him and to be so within 30 seconds at the end the um, is an incredible feeling. Back out on course and in the women's field Amelia Watkinson is comfortable in third place while ahead of her Laura Siddle is having to dig into every last ounce of effort she can muster. 
With the finish just a couple of kilometres away, she has leader Annabelle Luxford looking over her shoulder. Turning onto Ardmore Street, with the finish in sight, Siddle can see Luxford, agonisingly close, but still so far out of reach. Cheered and applauded through the final stretch, Luxford crosses for the win in 4 hours 27 seconds. Laura Siddle is just 11 seconds behind, her hopes of winning dashed by the narrowest of margins. The frustration of a fourth second place finish, very evident. Third place goes to Amelia Watkinson, the New Zealander crossing the line in 3 hours and 38 minutes. Her efforts as first New Zealander home, winning her the National Long Distance Championship title for a second consecutive time. I still felt strong at the end, but I just didn't have that that last little extra bit of speed to to pull her in. And I'm I, I'm sure Annabelle's a you know she's a world class athlete over the distance, and I'm pretty sure if I'd have pulled up on her shoulder, she'd have probably had another gear as well. <laughs> it's lucky to have a good swim, uh, and then um, felt quite good on the first half of the bike, and then was losing quite a bit of time to Laura. So um, I don't think I coped with the cold weather particularly well, but I mean it was hard for everyone out there. She definitely brought it back towards the end. Uh, I think that's her Ironman strength showing, so, but I was happy to hold on. It has been the best field ever assembled for Challenge Wanaka and produced some of the closest racing ever seen. The wet conditions of earlier in the day are a distant memory for the athletes still out on course. For the 1500 full and half distance athletes, this is their opportunity to complete one of the hardest challenges in world sport on one of the world's best courses. As the sun sinks, mum of three Anna Johnson makes her way around the edge of Lake Wanaka and 14 and a half hours after she set out, Anna completes her full distance race, crossing the line to a rapturous welcome from friends and family. Oh my God, it's, it's the longest, hardest thing. But uh, Wanaka puts on the most amazing support. And my family and my friends um, have been so loud. <laughs> um, it has been incredible. So it's thanks to them um, that I've done it. <laughs>